What happened in the 15th century, what is considered the latest century of the Middle Ages? Well, a lot of things. Things started to change. On the political and religious realm, the fall of the Eastern Roman Empire, for some that is the beginning of the modern period, at the end of the 15th century, the travels of Christopher Columbus, Vasco da Gama, a Spanish, Italian explorer and a Portuguese navigant who expanded the world by going personally, physically to places where nobody else had gone before. But that kind of revolutionary move was not the only one. Another very important that had to do with the transmission of knowledge and the possibility of reproducing knowledge serially, the invention of the serial printing by Johannes Gutenberg, a German printer, who had a genial idea. Instead of printing books using boards that happened very expensively in the Middle Ages, you had to carve a board and then print it and that board couldn't be used anymore for other kind of book. What he invented was the types. He gave form to each letter, to each character, so he could move the types around and create new words, new sentences every time he wanted to print a different book. That revolutionized the printing system and made books more available to everybody. So the books were not that expensive anymore. You could access more copies, more titles, and knowledge started to be transmitted in a more efficient way. Christopher Columbus, as most of us know, was supposedly born in Genova, in Italy, northern Italy, and he went to Spain looking for funds to finance his expedition to the West. He wanted to reach Asia. He wanted to establish a route of trade with China, Japan, and those far kingdoms that had been already known by Europeans since the travels of Marco Polo in the 13th century. But to establish a consistent connection was a challenge given that the Middle East had been taken after the Crusades again by the Muslims and it was very difficult to take commodities from Europe to the Far East because of the blockade of the Muslim states. So he finally convinced Queen Isabel and King Ferdinand of Spain to go west and reach the Indies, as it was, it, it was called, or the Asian world. And this is obviously the origin of a huge misunderstanding. When he landed in Guanahani on October 12, 1492, he found, according to his writings, an Asian kingdom. And then he went to Cuba, which he identified with Katai, a Chinese kingdom, and so on. He died in 1506, still believing that he had reached the shores of Asia. It had to be an Italian navigator, another Italian explorer, Americo Vespucci, who in 1511 recognized in his writings that these new lands, these strange territories and peoples that Columbus had found, were not Japan or Asia anymore, were a completely new world, an unknown amount of cultures of peoples with different religions, different foods, different beliefs. And that's how the name America came to be for the vast territory that Columbus discovered. And I put quotation marks here because these territories were not discovered for the people who were living here, the originally people of the Americas who subsequently were invaded, exploited and massacred but also converted into the Catholic faith by the Europeans. Columbus said on August 3rd, 1492, 
with three small vessels that couldn't carry more than 80 or 100 men going to the unknown without having any certainty of where they would land. They were lucky enough to land in one of the islands of the Bahamas, known to them as one honey. And then they were able to return. They had to leave a ship in what is now the island of Dominican Republic in Haiti. But most of his men returned and told the story about these strange territories and the possibility of opening a trade route with Asia, navigating west. That dream of reaching Asia was only fulfilled decades later when the Spanish conquered Mexico and then on the Pacific coast of Mexico in the port of Acapulco they established a line that is called the Philippine Armada or the Galleon of Manila that went to the Philippines and finally established the route going west between Asia and Spain and Europe for that matter. During those same years, a Portuguese navigator, Vasco da Gama, was exploring not the western territories but the southern territories and he was able to surround the southern tip of Africa and enter the Indian Ocean and finally landing in India. So he established a colony in India for many years. He also reached Asia but going south and then north. These extraordinary events by Columbus and Vasco da Gama opened the gates to many things, not only to different commodities and goods, also to the knowledge of very different political, religious, cultural systems, foods, animals, plants. The universe opened up tremendously. It was a revolution for the European mind. At the beginning, some were skeptical. Little by little, during the 16th century, Europeans started to realize that the world was not so static, so fixed, that it was movable, that some ideas had to be challenged, that definitely the earth was round and not flat, and that a new kind of humanity had to base their confidence on reason, on experience, and not so much on the belief of an external deity. This is precisely the moment in which what we understand as the modern era took place.